Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome to Take Stock Live. This is Sam Evans with you. Uh, we are bringing this show to you live on Facebook, powered by stockability.com. Happy Thursday to you, uh, and thanks for being here as well. Remember, this show is a live show. Uh, it's just gone noon Eastern right now. And uh, if you are joining us on the show as well, I can see a few of you have already coming in the round. Lisa, Dana, Side, and great to have you here as well. Please type in your comments. I'm checking them regularly. When you see me looking down, I'm checking on my other screen here as well. As your comments are coming in live, love to kind of bring you on on the show. Keep this as interactive as possible as well. Hope you've been having a great week so far. We'll do a little kind of roundup of where the market's at, what's in the news and what's going on in the world. I'm going to be joined by Stockability Student Momentum Coach Brian Dumares today. And we wanted to slow things down. And instead of focusing heavily on the trading and investing, today's subject, guys, we're going to be talking about retirement. Man, if there's anything that can creep up and tap you on the shoulder without you even realizing it, it's retirement. You're in your 20s, you can't think about it. You're in your 30s, it's maybe then. Suddenly you're in your 40s and thinking, wow, and before you know it, 50, 60, what have I done? So many people I've met over the years have, have had that, that struggle, you know, or that feeling that they're behind and so on. And I think our question today is the subject of the show is retirement. Is it a given or is it a goal? Sounds cryptic, right? When I ran this idea by a few people, but that's what we're going to be talking about. And we're going to be doing this by talking about the different ways we can plan ahead for retirement, different investment strategies, different vehicles, but also looking at charts. This wouldn't be Take Stock Live if we didn't look at a few charts along the way as well. Uh, great to see a few of you guys in here as well. Willie, how are you doing as well? Great to see you again, you guys. Thanks for joining us on the show. Keep it coming live. I have love having your live interaction. It makes all the difference. Let's get on over to the charts and see what is driving the market markets right now. How are we doing on here? Let's just go and take a look at the charts as we are right now. I've got my chart up of the S&P 500. I'm uh, going to just zoom in a little bit on the chart on the right hand side here uh, and just kind of get a little bit of an idea of where we are at right now. Zooming in on this chart, let's do a slightly better view on here. Um, we dip low, but the market is steadily holding right now around the 3,800 points. Seems to be the new benchmark. Oh, still what gives me a little bit of room to the downside is this lower area here. But at the moment it's a mixed month but heck we're only four days into the month right now a mixed week as well a little bit of chop going on on this market we've been having a nice little bit of steady sell-off in this market over the last few days as well uh, and again in my humble opinion we needed this as well it's definitely a little bit on sale right now wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more upside coming into the market over the next couple of days and what i like what i'm seeing on here as well is there is plenty of room i feel for this market to push a little bit higher on here as well finally in that but the question is after pushing higher are we going to then have this trend going back to the downside again at the moment if we do look into this these charts and we take a look at this now on these weekly charts as well a little bit of indecision a couple of down weeks on here but just looks to me at the moment like a pullback wouldn't be surprised to see a few of these markets uh moving this to the upside again but again one of these things when the bear does strike it strikes swift and hard and without any kind of heads up or warning for now my mantra has been the same still looking to buy those pullbacks as well and taking those opportunities on there as well so s p still looking strong again after a couple of days and don't be too unnerved right now though we are getting that lovely stair stepping pattern on here but plenty of good buy buying support down at these lower opportunities uh, but again i wouldn't be su too surprised to see guys uh, a little bit more upside on here maybe a little bit of a leg down and then a nice push back on here as well that's just me that's the broad market we want to talk about individual stocks as well as we go through all this too as well uh over broad indexes let's go now take a look and see our overall market watch about what's occurring on here on the major markets. I'm going to be zooming in a little bit so you guys can see right now. Uh, I'm going to be focusing right here on the futures markets, which is pretty much great. So Dow right now up 169 points, having a nice little bounce back at 31 and 409. Like we just saw S&P now holding easily at 38,037 points right now. Russell on the downside, a little bit of a pull. If you ask me, the Russell, the Russell stocks definitely were overbought. Uh, going into the back end of this year. We're seeing a little bit of weakness coming in that Russell as it's recalibrating itself and getting in line with the others. We call the big boys, the Dow, the S&P, and the NQ. We call these the three kings, guys. This is what we call is the three kings on here as well. And as we look back on this, on this particular market, and going and zooming back on this, let's go back over to this for a second on here and take a look. Oh, my charts have all kind of locked up on me right now hold a second there we go now, this is what happens when you go live on these things all right let's just take it back over to here and see what is going on here we go 
There we go. Back on the charts. Clean all those charts up. When we look at these, we look at these, the three kings. We're looking at your S&P. We're looking at the S&P. We're looking at the Qs. We're looking, which is the NASDAQ. And we're also looking uh, at the Dow Jones. All holding strong at the moment on here. It's that Russell that needs to have that little bit of catch up. That's what you want to have is a little bit of a catch up. For me right now, remaining pretty much flat in the market. Not a lot that I'm interested in at the moment. Like I said on here, uh, we are in that pullback territory on the market right now, which is looking good. Crude oil and gold, again, much much of a muchness today, I would say, uh, on the gold market. Gold at uh, gold here at 17.15 and crude oil at 60, just under 65 bucks. The crude market keeps going up. We were looking at that market just a couple of days ago in our live trade room, looking to just buy yet another pullback on there. It seems it's happened. You can't write it off. It's $70 on the cards. I wouldn't be too surprised to see that. It's $70 on the cards, maybe. Let's go take a look at that crude oil market, actually, because this has been one of the ones I've been looking at a lot uh, over the last few months. And just seeing it, it just keeps going from strength to strength, done and behaved exactly exactly as I would have anticipated it was going to behave. If you see on here, the pullbacks are steady and strong. Let's blow this chart up and go full screen. I want you to spend a little bit of time on here. Let's just zoom out just a touch on it so we can get a good look at it. But look at the trend. Look at the trend we've had on this market for quite some time. And yesterday, absolute textbook pullback uh, over the last couple of days to a beautiful area uh, of price support and now on the next leg up. What's going to stop it? At the moment, I don't really see a lot stopping it. I still am now smelling. And you know I've been calling 65 on this. I think $70 is on the card on here. Still buying the pullbacks, trying not to fight this trend. The demand is still there uh, for a market like this as well. And we absolutely love it. We do love it. And uh, it's a great market in that respect too as well. We have a challenge to go. But again, if you want to look at some bigger time frame charts, this is where we think we're going. Between $70 and $80 uh, on crude oil. So just buying those pullbacks as it happens. Remember all the things we talk about here on Take Stock. Uh, these are not recommendations. These are simply opinion. We are for educational and instructional purposes only. Trying to help you you negotiate the market waters with solid ideas uh, and thinking in the market as well. And uh, sometimes we get it right, sometimes we get it wrong. This is just the nature of the business as well. This is just how it goes. So a lot of things going on. What's the major news in the market right now as well that we can be talking about? The major things are we did have weakness in the market when it opened, but it seems like the market's recovering. Jobless claims. Uh, jobless claims basically will be getting an a, um, update on the labor market uh, when the uh, data for week ending to February 27th is released as well. In the previous week, jobless claims reached 730,000, well below what we thought it was going to be at 845,000. We are forecasting three quarters of a million for first time filers on that. Biden has agreed to cut the stimulus checks on the $1,400 stimulus checks and not give the stimulus checks to those earning above a certain threshold. I don't want to get political on this show, but I think that's a good thing. Let's let the people who are doing well through this uh, carry on doing that and let's put the money where it's needed. OK, I've always been a big believer in that. I think that could be smart as well. There's plenty of areas and there are some people who are in a position where they don't maybe need the money and others who do. I think that's a good call on that. Let's see how, how that vote comes out as well. Melvin Capital, as you know, were highly talked about during the whole GameStop fiasco, taking a hit of over 50 percent in January during the whole Reddit pop that we saw on GameStop returned over 20% last month though on a bounce back in that as well. So it just shows you can keep these, hit these guys down, but they're always going to bounce back as well after they just reported. And thankfully no tra major tragedy, but SpaceX Starship prototype rocket exploded after a successful landing as well. Uh, putting things back a little bit there for Elon Musk as well. Um, thankfully nobody was on board, um, but maybe a little bit of a setback as we venture once again uh, into space and looking up beyond as well. So that's really kind of our main news on this as well of what's going on in there. I would say from a market perspective, looking at the charts today as well, like I say, trading as normal. This is what we're really looking at right now. Trading as normal. Now going over to the Dow Jones and seeing on here as well. Uh, I think the markets, definitely the Dow does look a little bit less. I would say this one thing. I feel more confident being a bull on the S&P 500. That Dow has me a little bit concerned with the chop that we're seeing on there as well. And I will bring it up because I know a lot of you have been writing to me saying, hey, I love how you talk about the Russell. I never really factored it. You can start to see what I was talking about, that massive push we had on the Russell. I look at that chart here. This is a monthly chart that I'm zooming in right on the left hand side. This thing is screaming to me that it's overbought and needs some kind of a pullback. 
The one thing I'm not seeing in the major markets, the three kings and the prince, which is the Russell, is synchronicity. We're not seeing that. We would like to see more of that. That is something that just gets me a little bit concerned right now. And when you actually do look at these charts, particularly on here of where the Russell is trading today, and we'll zoom into that, still a lot of indecision on this market. There's still a few hours in the market to go. Interesting to see how the day plans out, but a nice strong little pullback on the S&P. From an intraday perspective, I'm kind of sitting on my hands right now not doing a whole lot. Brian Hannaford, good to have you in the room. Lisa, Bob, oh, Angelica, lots of people coming in the room right now. Remember to type questions and ask me any questions that you may have uh, as we go into the show today uh, and we get on to our guest as well. So, wow, let me take a little bit of a breather for a second. We were just looking at the market and we are limited on time here. So we want to make sure that we get through as much as we possibly can in the short time that we have together on here. But we wanted to start talking about retirement. I know for me personally, and I can only talk on my own behalf of the reason why I got into the markets was I wanted a plan for the future. And for most of us, our first foray into the market is stock ownership through maybe a mutual fund, uh, an equity fund um, through our retirement vehicle. And then the interest grows from there. For some, it stops at the 401k, it stops at the IRA, it stops at the SIP in the UK, whatever it would be, and no one ever really looks at it. But it is important in today's world, I feel more than ever, to have a good understanding of where you're at. And retirement is a very, very different world today. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring on my good friend, student momentum coach at Stockability to have this discussion with me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know the man very well. Here he is. He's looking nice and casual and relaxed uh, at New York, I believe. Uh, Mr. Brian Dumrest, how are you, buddy? Great to have you on the show. I'm pretty good. How's everybody doing? All right. I think they are doing well. Absolutely. Always a pleasure having you on the show. You look like you're in a different place right now. So swap North Carolina for some colder climbs, having a visit with the family up in New York, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I left. Uh, look, I drove up on Saturday night. I had a death in the family and I'm staying with my parents for a couple of days up in uh, North New Jersey. And it's. Okay. Went from 75 degrees to about 30 degrees, so. It'll hit you. Well, condolences <laughs> yeah. condolences to the family as well. Oh, um, thank you. It's an important time when any kind of loss like that is to be with the family and all of this as well. But And so thank you sincerely from, from everybody here for taking a, a little bit of time out of your day to join me on the show. We know we always love having you on the show. Yeah, Brian, likewise. you know, you've been in them, as we know from anybody who's looked at the show before, you've been involved in the financial markets for a very, very long time. And we've talked a lot about trading. We've talked about SPAC stops. We've talked about psychology. But you know what we've never really talked about is retirement. And, and this show for me, it was retirement. Is it a given or is it a goal? What I mean by that, I think the days are long behind us of where, you know, you commit years and years to a company because now you flip from company to company to company. You know, you get that nice fat, you know, you get the golden watch, but you get that, you know, 75 percent same as, you know, leave retirement salary as a pension and you're golden. Those days are gone. Do you feel that people yeah, can are. rely on being taken care of anymore? Or do you think that the, we all need to be more proactive and retirement is more of a goal now, Ryan. What, uh, Brian, what do you think on that? <clears throat> you know, well, <clears throat> I think we could all agree on that we are in a different world these days um, from people losing their jobs and downsizing. And look, you said it before, there's not a lot of people that spend their whole career at one place anymore. They're not there for that gold watch of 25 years. People have to reinvent themselves along the way. Well, guess what? Their retirement is no different. Everything you do in life is no different. It's the same exact thing. Mm. So it's not a given. You need to get off your butt and start doing something about it. It's almost like, and I don't want to say this because like every generation has their ups and their downs, you know? I mean, you look at the generations that live but through World War One and fought there themselves and then managed to make it back. And then, oh my God, they had to send their children to World War Two. I mean, one of the worst years you could have been born in. You know, you look at, you know, the, the, the fears during the 80s and stuff with Cold War and communism and things going on. But when you actually do look at a generation, particularly the baby boomer generation as well, they had a great opportunity, you know, to, to invest, buy and hold. But also the world was a very different place right That as well. Many of my elder family members now who are in their 70s and 80s, you know, they retired 20, 30 years ago on literally salaries or at least three quarters yeah. of their salary and have lived on that since. I don't feel like those opportunities are there for, for, for your generation, my generation, and future generations, Brian. What do you think? I, I agree with you. I really don't. I think that, like I said, you know, with COVID and, you know, everywhere you drive, like I drove up and down the main highway here and how many stores are closed down. It's just a different world. 
Okay. You know, people are not going to have those pensions anymore. A lot of companies did away with pensions. Yeah. You know, so now they and have let's remember why. Plan. Let's remember why they did that. They did away with those pensions yeah. because it benefited them. I mean, there yeah, are companies like big companies like, you know, you're talking like General Motors, a lot of the airline companies, their pension liabilities were bigger than the actual cash they had in their bank. Exactly. Exactly. So they had to stop and do something different. They were making you know, promises they couldn't keep. It was like a house of cards on top of it as well. So then that brings us, I guess, Brian, to the 401k. The 401k. What are your feelings on a 401k? Good? Bad? Indifferent? You, look, you know, the funny thing is a 401k originally started as just a savings account. Which is and what then, it still is, really, I feel. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know what? I, I, I can be honest with you. You know, look, if your company is going to match you know, what you're investing in, then you got to do it. I mean, it's, you know, I, I don't well, think if, there's does anything it, wrong with that. Irrespective, let's, let's take out the thing of performance for a second, right? Because obviously, you know, you have a 401k, you can stay in cash. Yeah. But you could also like, you know, you contribute, you know, even if you're going, one thing I like about it is being with a company, it forces you to at least put something away. Correct. Correct. It does force you to do it because you are something like self-employed people I know, you know, myself, I've been self-employed for over 15 years now. Um, you know, you have to get in a rich, have I don't have I don't qualify for a four hundred one k. I've not been employed, you know, so I have my own plans right. and stuff. But the point right. is, you have to be very proactive and very disciplined to put money away. The four hundred one k does it, and it's pre tax dollars, right? Yes, yes, you're exactly right. The one thing that I have a problem with the four hundred one k is most people don't even know what they're invested in. Right, they don't no idea what they're in. You know, if you're 20, you probably want to be a little more aggressive. As you get older, maybe you want to be a little bit more conservative in what you're invested in or something along those lines. But people, they don't like this is your money. You know, pay attention to what you're invested in. Yep. Are you in mutual funds? You know, which ones? Are you in bonds? Are you in growth? Are you in, you know, uh, health care? I mean, who knows? You know, you just got to pay attention. And that's the biggest thing where people are somewhat lazy in a way. And they don't even look at that until it's too late or – you know, they watch the market so close now that they start rolling in and out of things and they don't understand the movements, what's going on in the market, you know. So but I, like I said, I think the 401k is a good vehicle, especially if your company is going to match you. But then you got to think about, like you said, you're self-employed. You know, you probably have some type of IRA or something that you trade yourself and you do your own research. If you want to put the time in, you could do the same thing. Uh, for anybody could do the same thing is what I'm trying to say. Uh, absolutely. And again, we could be more proactive. I mean, like I said, you know, with a 401k, which I think it's anything, anyone looking at the show right now, it's like, listen, if you've got a 401k, first thing I'm going to say is great. You're doing yeah. something. The next thing I'm going to say is how much do you know about it? How much do you know? Like, what can you exactly. invest? What can you invest in? <clears throat> what assets can you put your money into? Did you realize you can go to cash whenever you want? You can go to cash and keep it in money market. You know, strategically, you've got to ask, we've got to start asking questions. I mean, let's say we're going to take a, I'm going to go over to the charts right now. And uh, hopefully, Brian, you'll, you'll be able to, to, to see this as well. Here we go right now. And I'll zoom in for yeah, you as it. well. Um, and I'm going to just look at this weekly chart here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring up this to a, a larger time frame. I'm going to just look at this this weekly chart here, right? Now, as we zoom in and we, we see some of this information, without doubt, you know, this market has been in a roaring uptrend. I think we can both agree on that. And anybody with a 401k, you know, could have been literally contributing. Let's say it's 100, 200 bucks a month, just going in, going in, going in, buying, 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 right? But the thing to understand is, you know, and, and this is where it has, you know, I think you've talked about this before. It's the cost averaging part of this where people can, yeah. can get hurt. As you're buying more and more and more and you're buying more, let's just say you're tracking, I don't know, let's give me, you know, a lot of the mutual funds, like a, a good S&P track, move, like the, the um, let me say the, uh, I'm trying to think of the one that Fidelity have. They have that, that, that one, very, very popular. Vanguard as well. The Vanguard, Vanguard the, the, the VIN, yeah, the Vanguard Institutional Index, right? The VIN. <clears throat> yeah, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Which literally just tracks the S and P five hundred. Let's just say you're buying a hundred dollars worth of the shares, right? Let's say every month, you know, maybe you're even coming out of college right now. You're in your first job. You're contributing a hundred dollars a month as this goes. Probably you've got right now is your ROI is actually on this going down, and your cost of participation is actually going up. We talked a lot about this before on the show. So your hundred dollars right now is going to buy you a lot less of the stock here than it would have bought you down here. So it's actually your buying power is decreasing. And what actually then happens is you're taking on more and more and more and more risk. Now, someone said, well, I'd rather be in. You've got to be in it to win it. That's granted. I get that. Right. But the problem then is then when we do get those pullbacks, because we've bought more of it up at the top here, that hurts us even more. 
So I guess my question is, is what could we do, Brian? OK, if we say, well, I want to contribute X, does it does it pay us to just blindly buy and hope it just keeps going? Or does it make sense to maybe try and time this? Because look, a lot of the experts will say, don't try and time the market. Right. What are your thoughts on that? I've been doing it for 10 years, trying to time the market. You know, <clears throat> the more you apply yourself, the more you understand, the better you do get at it. Look, there's not there's not a perfect answer. OK, but one of the things that like, you know, as the market's going higher and higher and people will say, all right, I'm going to invest. I think you're using one hundred dollars a month yeah. or whatever. The higher it goes, you know what? Maybe you cut that down to 50 and then we get these big sell offs. Then you could probably go back to one hundred dollars, you know. And also, you could actually have something set up where it could be automatically withdrawn from your, you know, your account. You know, if you like, give you an example. You know, ten years ago with my dog, I went to my vet, and he's like, "I'm like, should I get insurance?" He goes, "Why don't you just put fifty dollars away every month? And this right. way, you have the money. If you never Absolutely. use it, great. But guess what? I never did it. Yeah. You know, you know, that's just the nature of the beast. That's why if you have it automatically withdrawn, and you understand, hey, you know what? The market's real top heavy here. You know, maybe I'll still contribute." But at a lesser scale, instead of 100, maybe I'll put $25 in or $50 in. Then when you get these big sell-offs that we're talking about, like NASDAQ pulled back, what, about 10% already, 12% uh -huh. or something? Nice then you can start. Yeah, so now, exactly, it's time to buy it. So now you say, boom, I'm going to put another 100 bucks in a couple or, of or whatever it is. I marked a couple of areas off here. Like, I'll put some checks to them. See, after these little sell-offs that we've had, it's like, yes. yeah, you know what? Why, why not save a little bit? Contribute some to cash, right? Yeah. And then contribute some to stock. And then the point is, hey, when I do get these dips around these areas, buy a little bit more. You're not going to look. Yeah. No one's going to ever argue that the market goes up. And I get really frustrated sometimes because people are very like, oh, you know, like you get these perpetual bears and they all want to call the top of the market. And I'm like, you know what? You get bear markets and they are nasty, but they don't last forever. And historically, the market always does recover. But the problem is, is can you stomach the recovery and can you turn those recoveries to your advantage? Right. Because you'll get these sell-offs, but the problem is, is in an area like this, I'm circling right now, a load of people dumped and they're like, oh, I'm panicking, it's going to get worse. But now it's actually a great time to be buying it, you know, and making sure that when the market goes down, you're protecting yourself. We talked about this a lot in there. Can you do that in a 401k still, Brian? You know, that's what I guess what people are asking, though. Can I still do that? Yeah, you'd have to probably just uh, fill out the proper paperwork or something like that. You know, I don't know the exact ins and outs of it, but yeah, I'm sure you can. Or just say, I want to stop contributing and then pick it up again. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's a big deal, whatever. But also, if you understand technical analysis or have a clue about it, you could start watching it and saying, you know what, I could find these high quality areas to invest in, you know, or put more money towards it. That'll also help you even if you have a swing trade account or even a day trading account or whatever it may be. Like, they all kind of work together. It's just a different time frame that you're looking at, really. So if you understand the bigger picture, it's going to help you along the way. You look okay. at this right now and it's like, this is the point. It's like, there's a couple of different things. And again, I want to just zoom into this little area here on the chart. You can clearly see it. This is a weekly chart of the NASDAQ. Exactly what we were just talking about here. Great as you're buying, buying, buying. But again, let's let's just mark a few lines in the sand here. You're, you're contributing, you're contributing literally month, month, week after week. This is where you get slammed. You get three down weeks like this, and then all of that cost averaging on the way up, you take a hit a whole lot quicker. You know, that's 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 what doesn't that's what hurts people. Is you take that hit that much quicker, don't you, Brian? When it's like almost like, you know, oh, you yeah. have to be set on your hands. Now I'm looking at this market here. And I'm saying to myself right now, well, based on the uh, on this area here, you know, we've got a whole nice ceiling around this 12 to 50 area. I'd rather be contributing here. And as the market's going high, instead of buying it as it's going high, wait for it, like you say, or just contribute a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they don't have to be painful. But I think people just forget that to a degree as well. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, it's all one and good when the market goes up. Well and good when the market goes. But those whips can, can really, really hurt you in, in that respect as well. I don't think people ask the right questions, do they, either, Brian? No. I mean, that, that's another thing. Or maybe they just don't know what questions to ask. Let me say this right now. Let's put you on the spot. <clears> and before we look at some other uh, uh, things on here, because we're only look, talking about a, a 401k, because most of you now have a 401k, and we can talk a little bit more about that. But if you were joining a new company right now, and they were going to offer you a 401k, would you just say, oh, great, contribute and let it on a go autopilot? Or would you ask questions and, and start to find out? And if so, I think people like, what questions would you be asking, Brian? Well, number one, I'll give you an example. So when I, uh, I'm going to 
I'm trying to think of my last job that actually had a 401k with Bear Stearns. And when I went there, I went to the human resources department. And they gave me two packets. One was my health care and the other one was my for my retirement account. So they gave me a retirement account. <clears throat> and at the time, I just started checking off boxes. You know, I saw, oh, a Vanguard I recognize, Fidelity I recognize. I didn't see what type of fund it was. Mm. I didn't ask, do you have anything else to invest in besides a mutual fund? Um, is there you know, some type of uh, profit sharing program. Like I didn't ask anything. I only, I didn't know what to ask. You know, now it's like, okay, what kind of funds, you know, what's the maximum I could uh, invest in? Like things that who are for a brand new person, you know, are these the only funds I can invest in? Can I pull money out when I can go to cash? You know, things like that. Like people don't ask these questions. People just sign up for their 401k and most likely never look at it again until they're later in life when they need it. And they're like, wow, I thought I would have more money than that or yeah. whatever it may be. And, and also what frustrates and anyone listening to the show right now, think about diversification. You know, you can see a lot of experts and a lot of these experts will say the same thing. OK, and I don't claim to be an expert, by the way. I'm just someone who thinks you can do things slightly different. That's how I've always lived my life. The point is, this: I mean, everyone talks a lot about diversification and they'll say, yeah. well, you know, if you want safety, you know, go with the, the likes of the Vinix. And, you know, you take a look at this right now and, you know, you, you, you see, you know, that the, the Vinix Here's the chart of the Vanguard Institutional Index. I found that, you know, the symbol up here and it is spot on with the S&P. So if I go Vinix uh, and then if I take a look at actually the Vinix right here and then I literally go over to here and let's go over to the SPY, you, you'll see it's like looking at the same chart. I mean, look, there's your S&P 500. OK. And then if we go over to here right now and go V-I-N-I-X, which is my symbol for that. And I'll zoom in a little bit. It's the same chart, right? So you're yeah, spot all, on. All, yeah, all the holdings are going to be the same. Exactly you know, the same. So it's great. You know, but the problem, and people say, well, that's, you're safe. Because you're always going to be safe with the S&P. Well, granted, you're not going to get the volatility. But here's the thing. Are you really diversified? I would argue you're not. No, because the problem no. is you're not diversified and there's this misconception of oh you're diversified because you own a mutual fund that has is made up of 500 different components in the s&p 500 they're all different companies but the problem is is that you ever had the saying you know don't put all your eggs in one basket well if you put all your eggs in one basket problem is when you drop that basket no matter how big that basket is you've got 500 different eggs you've got a duck egg a quail egg an ostrich egg a chicken egg you drop that basket they're all going to break they're all in the yeah. same thing. And that's what one of the things that I stress to people is, yeah, diversification goes beyond just having an index fund made up of different companies. Right, Brian? Yeah, because you got to think of it this way. You know, <clears throat> some people will say, hey, I'm in the uh, the energy sector. I'm in the technology sector. I'm in the industrial sector. Oh, that's great. But you're all in stocks. <laughs> when, co when COVID hit, what happened to all these indexes? What happened to all these mutual funds? What happened to all of these things? They went lower. True diversification would be you're in stocks, bonds, you know, uh, real estate, you know, different things like that. You know, things that may overlap a little bit, but pretty much are independent of each other. So that's like true diversification. Having a couple different stocks in different sectors is not true diversification. There you go. This is COVID. This is the era. Over a 35-day pay period on this weekly chart, that thing sold off 33.79%. You can see that. I'm zooming right yeah. in Well, let, let, me say one, let me say one more thing here on this because this is very important and people don't realize this. That sell-off, okay, was how many days? One Is that a, a daily six or bars. week? Six bars. So that's, that's five, six weeks. This is a weekly chart. Six weeks. So now that's six weeks. Okay. Now look at the uptrend starting from the left. That was probably about four years of an uptrend that was wiped out in six weeks. Let's go take a look. Okay? Let's go look now, at the charts six, together. If you're 65 years old and you that happens to you, what are you going to do? You're well, like, look, oh my you, God, I am not retiring. I got to get a job. Look how quickly. This is the thing. You look yeah. at the time it took. Thank you. You know, you look at the time it took here and then the time it takes here. And you look at all those gains that were made. You know, if you actually go back to this last time when the price was at this area, let's zoom out for a little bit and just take a little look at this so we can see, you know, since this market, this area, let's say these were the lows right now. These <clears> lows <throat> here, let's go mark a, a line in the sand right here for you. Guys, that's October. Let me zoom in so you can see it. That was October 17. What year? We went oh, back here to levels of October 2017. But you're bang on there, about three, four years. Okay. Yeah. And then Tanya. we bounce and look, it bounced back, but you see the ferocity of it. And again, to me, that's just then wasted time waiting for it to go back again as we break those highs. Because actually the market's only about 15% higher now than it was 
from these comp- particular highs that we saw here, Brian, as well. But know? that's exactly my point. You know, you got to. How old are you? You know, if you're right. 65 when that COVID happens, what are you going to do? Yeah. And mo- what's going to happen then? You're not in control. You don't know what's going. So what's going to happen? Emotion is going to take over and saying, "I got to sell out here." You know, at the very bottom where you should be buying. You know. You want you want a good tip, everybody? This is what you do. When everyone's starting to sing Kumbaya and everything's great in the world, that's when you can start selling it. Or at and least protecting, we... <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Or at least or... let's start protecting it a little bit. Yes, or even doom and gloom. When COVID at the I, bottom I, down there, I got to get out. I got to get out. That's a buying opportunity. Because I will say to you, I've, I've, been, I've been accused over the years, Brian, a little bit by some people of being, oh, you know, you're too negative. No, I said, well, no, I'm a realist. You know, that, that's what I am. And I'm like, you know, I, I'm all about protecting. So again, I'm going to just look at kind of a snapshot. Let's just zoom in like around here. And I look at this move that we've had up here. It's like, I'm not saying, hey, you know, just throw caution to the wind. But I'm saying, why don't you just like protect and like some of these gains? Because like, right now, I'm not being funny. If this market, let's just look at this and say, well, look, 290, 300. If this market doesn't hold those areas uh, and we get a push to the downside, what's the point in giving all that up that we've just gained here? And then on the way back down again, you know, so it's about protecting. It's like, I always say this, you know, you go to work all month, you get your paycheck. You don't say, oh, I'll keep it. You know, I'll collect that next month's next month. You know, right, keep my paycheck. Right. Let me work for six months and pay me. Guys, if you're getting paid, my, 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 my whole simple rule is then if you're getting paid, get paid. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's simple in that respect. Give yourself a chance uh, to actually make a little bit of money and, and get paid along the way as well. It's a really important, it's a really, really important subject on here as well. All right, so we've talked about the 401k. Let's spend five minutes talking then about another alternative. And again, you know, we've got viewers all around the world as well. And there are many things you can do, like there's um, uh, self-directed pension funds as well. There's SIPs, you know, with TSPs, TSAs, all different vehicles. Whatever you do, you know, take take a uh, t- take you know some kind of stock, you know, no pun intended on what you've got as well. But I feel that the the of uh, just hoping that yeah, you know, a 401k gets back to it. It is a glorified piggy bank. You're saving towards it. Your company's contributing, but that's free money. Great, but it's not free money if 50% of it gets hit. So again, protection is the name of the game. But there are limitations. What are your thoughts about anybody thinking about rolling a 401k into an IRA or having an IRA side by side? Because I like the IRA, Brian. What are you about you? Uh, absolutely. You know, because your 401k is just going to sit there and do whatever the mutual fund is doing. Yeah. If you have a self directed IRA, now it's on you. You know, you could trade those stocks in there, you know, have a plan, buy something, sell it out. Okay, you made that money. You're not going to get taxed on it to the very end. But then. You could just keep doing that. You know, that could be where you're going to make more wealth, create more wealth. You know, the more the more buckets of wealth you have, the better off you're going to be. OK, it'll help you. OK, now you could do other things in there as well. You take your time, be more patient. You know, maybe you take a trade. But a lot of people, what happens? A lot of people only know buy and hold. They don't know how to take a profit, people. And they, That's the problem and, too. And, it, and it's not just that, I feel. It's like they're limiting themselves just to stocks. I mean, there's great right. opportunities in bonds. There's great opportunities. Like, well, bonds, I don't want to buy bonds. Well, shorten then. I mean, <laughs> right? Let's just go take a look at the bond market for a second here. I mean, look at this. Look at the downward trend. Yeah, well, we got we've by the inverse, been right? in, you know, on the 20 years, right? This is the TLT ETF. I mean, talk about an opportunity to just sell rallies sell rallies so, but then people say well i don't know what you mean by that how can i make money when the market's going down because they don't understand the concept of short selling which is why you have to get some education and understand but that opportunity there as the price of bonds is going down which means those short-term interest rates are going up there's an opportunity to borrow and sell those things to a high price and then buy them back at wholesale there's another opportunity right there for us right brian by diversifying yeah. saying i'm not going to just buy stocks and buy bonds I'm going to actually use it a different way. What are your thoughts on a play like that? Yeah, you could buy the inverse ETF, you know, so you're technically long you something, but you're, pre- you know, like even an inverse uh, of the SPY or something like that. So that's a way of getting around the short sale rule in a retirement account is buying the inverse, but it's a way of protecting yourself. Okay. There's many ways you could do this. Like right now, you don't know what you don't know. A lot <laughs> of people don't know. Okay, they don't know that they could make money as the market goes lower. They don't know that they could do these different vehicles. You know, like the inverse ETF I was just mentioning. I bet you, I'll guarantee that probably more than half the people listening right now probably never even heard of them before, and they're probably Googling what's an inverse ETF. 
That's well, fine. there you go. Let's, let's let's pull one up for you right now. So we've got like inverse ETFs on here. I mean, there's a ton of different ones on here uh, that we could do, but we could do like inverse ETFs. Here's one just such right now. I'll, I'll pull it off here. In fact, what you got a favorite on those, Brian, would you say? I, you know what? I do, off the top of my head, I do not. I apologize. We could also buy puts, though. I mean, we could also yeah, buy puts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, if we uh, go absolutely. back to like a market like the S&P right now, over to the charts on this, um, again, you know, if this market does break down, we can buy puts on it. Uh, options, you know, put options will profit when the market goes oh. down. You're allowed to do that. You know what? I do. SDS, Sam, David, Sam. SDS. The, the, yeah, Sam, David, Sam, Suds. That's the uh, inverse of the SPY. There you go. The ultra short. That's the one. There's so many of these there you to remember. Go. Now, look, I, as this, this is a daily chart, right? Let's change this over to a weekly chart. Now, look at this. As the market's been going up, this has been going down, right? But right. if the market then starts QID, there's another one we could do on there. QID, exactly. yeah. you know, yep. Nasdaq. what is yep. this? Dirt cheap. This market bombs out. This is a market that we could get some serious good bump in. And again, if you look at this, we could have long term plays on this. You know, QID, we can take a look on this. OK, like you're not going to get much cheap, <laughs> right? This is the no. ultra short QQQ. I mean, you can't do anything else. You hey, know, listen, there's, there's, there's many be, other ones now. You could be you buying know. calls on this thing. You know, go yeah. look at this in 2008. Look where this thing was at 34,000 point, 33,000. Now it's in it. It's a lot of long term hold, but it's a way for somebody as an investor to do a buy and hold, but on the opposite way. So this is a market that's primed for that. It's an insurance policy. What you're buying is insurance policy. And I've always said this to many people, anybody listening right now, I'm like, guys, you know, there's a lot of different things that we can do. You know, we're told we've got to spend millions of dollars on car insurance, home insurance, health insurance, cell phone insurance. I mean, how many people have cell phone insurance? How many people yeah. have wealth insurance, retirement yeah. insurance? Well, I didn't know you could. That's because there was no benefit to you ever thinking or knowing that you could, right? It's not in yeah. the best yeah. interest of everybody to do that. Another thing I'd suggest to everybody here as well, another alternative investment, DXY. Let's go look at the dollar index, okay? So I want to go and look at the dollar, the dollar index on here. So I don't want to look at the futures. I'm actually going to go over to the uh, spot, the actual cash version of this. This is the dollar index. You might think, well, what am I what am I looking at this one for on here on the dollar index? Well, why not? Here's your dollar index right now. Let's go over to a longer term chart. There's a monthly chart you can see right now. Plenty of movement on the dollar index. Very rangy this has been for a quite some time. But enough movement on both the upside here and on the downside here, the dollar index. Your dollar is moving constantly every single day. You know, we're in an opportunity right now, potentially, where this dollar index has got a great shot of moving at a support area and pushing its way back up to 100. What could we do on that? If the dollar goes up, the euro could go down. We could embrace Forex. We could be buying currency. Yeah. We could be selling currency. There's a lot of different things like that. That, my friends, though, is something you can need an IRA for, right, Brian? Not something I you can do in a 401k. I like that zone, actually. <laughs> yeah. It's in a nice place. I mean, it's a pretty rangy market. So, well, how could, I, yeah, how could yeah. I take advantage of that? Well, the best way to take advantage of a market like that would be to go over to a currency pair. And outside of the, the dollar, the euro is one of the most highly traded areas that you've got. And, you know, this is your euro right now. Let's go back and look at it on a on a weekly chart on this. And I actually take a look. And I want to just remove these areas that you can see. These are from a study that I was doing uh recently with a friend of mine but if you actually take a look and zoom in on this chart right now and, and see where we're at let's just do a little bit of a zoom on here we're in a major area right now where there's a ton of selling pressure on the euro and the euro is breaking down and there's room for this to go let's zoom in euro is trading at around 1.2 right now this is a big threshold if we cannot hold this area where we are right now no reason why this isn't going to get down to about 116.50 on this you know if you actually got to do our feature here, your call my put, guys, basing on this right now, I'm pretty bearish on the euro right now. Bullish on the dollar, bearish on the euro. Everyone's brainwashed. Stock, 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 stocks. Even in a retirement account, you can participate in Forex if you have the right structure on your retirement account as well. It's more than just the account. It's about the assets as well. You like the Forex, Brian? Do you do a little bit of that or you still kind of stick to what you know or what you're I, uh, You with? know what? I, I've been sticking to my futures trading and uh, it's been it's been acting really well for me so i don't really change up too much no. you know i'm kind of boring in what i do but it, it's i know this I know but it's this. paying but it's paying me well that's a good know? thing and but from a retirement account as well like for me i trade pretty much the same thing every single day you know this yeah. is my market uh the, the as a for income style of trading is the dow jones you know i've been a 
I love yeah. the Dow. I, I work the Dow pretty much every single day. It's been it's my market of choice, you know. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. all I do every day is the Dow. But I will say this, um, you know, for retirement accounts, when you've got the time on your side and you can go look at other things, that's where you get you know, those other commodities and dollar index and all those other good good things can be really really powerful on there as well. We'll get back over to the charts in just a second, Brian. Um, and I'd love to do your call, my put, see what you got your eye on as well. Any other last? tips should i say for anybody sitting here thinking all right you you you, you've talked you know some interesting stuff on here as well i I would love to give one of my own figure out what rate of return you need this is what scares the living bejesus out of me what do you need people go to me well i i I don't know what i need and i'm like well what do you mean well you know i'm sure it'd be fine what do you need 10 percent a year over the next 20 years do you need 12 percent 15 i've never gave that a thought why I've never, well, I've been told it's all going to be fine. I'm like, well, here's some sobering stuff for you guys. Just if you really do think that everything's going to be fine. Let me show you this. And I don't know if you've seen this, Brian, but I was doing some research before. And you um, you know a little bit of what I do. But this is over on the Fidelity website. This is Fidelity's website, okay, that I'm looking at here, okay, on fidelity.com. But check this out, my friends. Estimated cost for healthcare post 65 295,000 per couple in assets needed today. This was from last year. This is on Fidelity's own website. Nearly 300,000, they estimate, a couple in retirement from 65 will need just for their basic health care coverage. And what's really scary about this, okay, is this as it goes on here. This, look, look at this. This is the one that really gets me excluding long-term care, 300 grand. Now imagine that for just a second. Most people say, well, I haven't got 300 grand in the bank going into retirement. That's just healthcare coverage. You take into account, you could have a million dollars in cash right now. You've got to take 300 grand off there for healthcare coverage. Uncle Sam wants his, his, his cut, 25%. Before you know it, your million dollars, if you're putting your taxes and your healthcare costs aside, you've got 450 left. Divide 450,000 between a couple over the next 20 years, that's going to equate to $22,500 a year living expenses, and I haven't even factored inflation in yet. And how many people do you think are going to live a comfortable life on $22,500 a year in 20 years from now? That's my question to you, Brian. Do people really pay attention no. to this stuff enough? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know, a lot of people too have a, they may have a financial advisor or something like that. And I get it. You know, they have a purpose and stuff like that. But do you actually see the fees that are being taken out right. every year? You know, do they have your best interest at heart? Um, you know, like I said, you got a million dollars in the account. Their fee might be 1%. What's that, $10,000 a year? Yep. And it doesn't matter if the market goes up or down. Even during COVID, you know, that massive sell-off, yep. they're still getting paid. It doesn't well, matter. Exactly. You know, these are some of the, you know, these are questions you have to ask, you know. How would you protect me to the downside? You know, um, you know, what other vehicles could I be in? I mean, there are, you just have to ask questions. Going okay? back to it, again, the Dow, look, I'm, look, it's all in there. All things are saying, zooming in, looking at the chart from here, the sell-off that we had. A lot of people probably ended up in 2020 about flat, right? Yeah. After, even if you weathered the storm and sat through it, you didn't make any money barely. Let's say you squeezed out maybe 5%. Your fees are 2%. That's a net 3%. What about 2008 when people lost 60% of their accounts? Guess what? They still had to pay fees on it. That's what I'm exactly saying. Right. You realize you're still paying fees. So your money manager is always going to make money whether you win or whether you lose. Something doesn't sit right with me on that, Brian. Yeah, exactly my point, you know, because people just think, well, that's what my colleagues told me. That's what my family members told me to do is just get a financial advisor and I'll, you know, I'll figure it out later. Well, you know what? What happens if you were 65, 70 years old and that COVID sell-off hit at that time? You lost almost half of everything you had. Do you think for a full year you had any good night's sleep? Probably not. You're like, what am I going to do? You know, I need this market to come back. You know, and then now that it's back, everyone's like, oh, I knew it was going to come back. I knew it was going to come back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but once again, how old are you? If you're 25, 30, it's different than if you're 65 or 70. You know, and it's like, oh, something like that probably won't happen again. How do you know? These different variables pop up all the time that are unexpected to the market. Okay, so you got to be prepared. At least have some type of uh, circuit breaker in that says, you know, pulls the trigger on your account or protect your account or whatever it may be. You know, even like, you know, you could use like an inverse ETF or something like that as a hedge against your portfolio if you wanted to. You might lose money there, but you'll make money on that. 
So it's kind of like a washout, you and know, type be, of deal, or options and, or anything, you know. And let's be and let's be honest about it. People, are like, oh, it sounds like a lot of work. Well, if you think it's a lot of work providing <laughs> your financial future for you and your loved your ones, then I'm sorry, nobody should care about your money more than you. But on the other hand, I get we all live busy lives. People don't need to spend more than an hour or so a month on this. This is not day trading we're talking about here, ladies and gentlemen. We're not talking about you being in front of a screen like Brian's an active trader. I'm an active trader. Like, no, <clears throat> we're talking about proactivity. Maybe once a month. For some people, maybe once a quarter. Doing it on your own terms as well. Yeah. You know, if you want, if you, my mum always said to me, if you want what others, if you want the things that other people have, you've got to do the things that other people don't do. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, you're absolutely right. You know, you, you got to do the things you got to do. Or, you know, if you want change, if you want something you've never had, you got to do something you've never done before. If you're not happy with the way your retirement account is, then do something you've never done before. Get some insight on it, you know, get some guidance on it and, you know, get something on there. And, you know, what fate weighs me is, you know, you take somebody with a million dollar account paying even just 1% a year over the course of 10 years, that's a hundred thousand dollars. Now, that's a kid's college education. You know, why give it to somebody else? Maybe you invest just a little bit of that in learning how to do it better. These are all the different things. And I think, you know, people always look at, you know, the cost of doing things, the cost of their time, spending time learning about something, spending time getting good at it. Well, people never look at the cost of not doing something. And that's what I'm saying. How much is your retirement account costing you by underperforming and not being protected? It's an important subject, I feel. Right, Brian? Yeah. You know, you know, it's funny. Uh, just a little side note here. I've had a couple of students um, over the years, you know, when I uh, did presentations and uh, they signed on and um, they would say, well, I have a financial guy. I'm like, oh, that's great. I'm like, well, you know, once you start doing it, you know, maybe you'll take it over. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to leave it with them. You know, they're doing a phenomenal job. All of them are now self-directing their own account that I've talked to. OK, just because now it's like, wow, they're doing what I could do. I just need to put a little time in and stop being lazy. That's all it comes down to. You just got to want to do it. You got to want to do it. Procrastination. Procrastination. And procrastination is usually because people are worried about failing. It's not laziness. It's just worried about failing. And yeah, uh, yeah. you never know. You never know how it's going to work out. You know, you really don't as well. So um, super useful, Brian. I really appreciate the insight in that as well. And anyone looking at the show right now, we don't say this to scare the life out of you. It's not about being scared. It's about being aware. And they're two different things. But a good friend of mine once said to me, you know, a lot of people, they live their life and they bury their head in the sand. And hopefully yeah. it's going to take care of itself. So, you know, and you know what I say? And I said that they do bury their head in the sand. They sleep well, but they bury their head in the sand. And I'm like, you know what the biggest problem with burying your head in the sand is? you got to be on your knees to do it. And being on your knees is not a good place to be. It's not a place of strength. It's a place of weakness. And this is probably the most important money that anybody could ever have in their retirement accounts. So do check out, you know, the different resources. More than happy to help at stockability.com as well. But even if you just go and find out what you can do. If you want to do anything right now, I'm going to say do this. Go and find out. you got a 401k? Go and find out what you're allowed to invest in go and find out how many changes you're allowed to make each year on it go and find the watch list go and find out the fees you got an ira you've got money under accounts you've got mutual funds go and find out what your fees are most people don't know break those things down am i making money am i not making money and when you turn around and you break and you say well you know i don't really have to complain right now because you know my money manager's doing okay i'm making money with all due respect who isn't making money right now the market's going up they should be making money. <laughs> they should be making money. It'd be scary. And some people aren't making money right now. Everyone's making money. The question is not how well are they doing in a bull market. The question is how well are they going to do for you in a bear? That's the question to ask. Go ask those questions, guys. Just go in, you know, go ask those questions. It's a, is, you know, a great thing. Brian Hanover just asked, is just having cash an option? Listen, I would say this personally, and I'd love to answer this question. Brian Hanover asking us right now. Is just having cash an option? I think part of your portfolio should always be in cash. I keep money in cash all the time. Rainy day, powerful things. I'm a big real estate investor. I have real estate as part of my portfolio. I've rode my real estate portfolio through the 2008, 2007, 2008 and back up. And I'll keep riding it because for me, it's long term and it, it's great for the long term and it's good. But I always keep a little bit of cash because if the market falls apart again, I want to go and buy stuff dirt cheap. I need cash to do that. I don't think having everything in cash is a great idea, but is it a good idea to have some? From my opinion, yes. What about your thoughts, Brian? I agree 100%. I'm always one of those people that, um, for that next moving variable, okay, that thing that pops up out of nowhere, I want to be able to have the cash on hand to handle that. I don't want to be scrambling around. So I believe, I mean, I don't know what percentage should be in cash, but like, I like to have a little a chunky nest egg well, i think that you know? becomes bespoke as well doesn't it on the individual but the point is yeah, i mean exactly. i would say this if the question is have i just got cash 
I wouldn't want to all be in cash. I want to be exposure. But what a lot of people don't understand and they do need to understand and there needs to be a growing awareness is, you know, you can look at today's stock market and you take a stock and you take a stock like Disney or something like that. And you're like, you know, I want to invest in it. And it's so expensive. OK, that's fine. But you can do options in it. You can use you could have a big wedge of cash and just use that much of it and participate with a little. So I say go look at markets like options and then don't use all of your cash but at least participate, but participate with education and knowledge. That's what, you know, what, what, one more thing that you were talking about Disney. So I had a friend of mine, um, I'm going to be 50 this year. So probably uh, 25 years ago, he started, he took a hundred dollars every month and started to invest in McDonald's. That's what he did. A hundred dollars every month. And the next, you know, he's got X amount of shares. He sold out when it popped over 200, you know, and that was like, instead of just putting that hundred dollars into a savings account, he just invested in uh, like a, a stock like McDonald's, you know, just to add a little bit, you know, a hundred dollars a month is not a lot of money, you know, but just to start to build up a different um, wealth account and start to build up, you know, so you have a cash account. Now he's got the McDonald's, he's got his, uh, his regular job and stuff like that. So he's got cash flow coming in from a couple different angles. And that's what you want to do. You want to have multiple uh, sources of income coming in or even wealth, because if one gets taken away, you got a couple more to fall back on. You know, if you fall back, you know, if you lose your job and you're all in cash, what's going to happen? You start eating through your cash. You got nothing else that has growth to it. So these are things to think about as well for yourself. These really are. They really are things. And you make valid points, Brian. And, you know, I think that, you know, anything It's about for me being proactive. And, and 100 percent. Too, too many people are just too many people are just not proactive. You know, that's one of the biggest issues that we have on here. All right, Brian, well, let's take your talk about your call, my put. Love to go through that as well. What do you got your eyes on there? You told me before the show as well. We've got about five minutes left and we've overrun a little bit, but that's fine. It's our show. We can do what the heck we want. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this. Your call, my put. What should we look at here, Brian? You said you're both bullish and bearish today. What do you want me to take a look at first? Let's go over to those charts, my friend. All right. So, uh, like, so I've been looking at gold. You know, gold's been under pressure. Um, the last, uh, I guess, few weeks, it seems like. I think we're coming into somewhat of a support zone on the- So are um, you saying uh, gold for a buy on this, on this, you thinking, or to sell it down to that particular point? What are we thinking? No, I think, I think right in the area where we are, like 157 uh, area, 158 Ooh. area. Yeah, looking at this. This is a yeah. pretty key area that we're in. And I'm looking at some big yeah. time frame charts. I mean, we don't mess around with the tiny stuff on here, do we, on here? But this area here, you know, you're yeah. thinking, you expect to bounce. You willing to buy now? Or do you want to see a little bit of a confirmation? Because I like to sometimes see a little bit of a turn in these things well, as well. Well, yeah, uh, you know what? That's that's actually part of my rules right now when I trade. If it's coming into a high quality area, I need a little confirmation to it before I'll jump in. I'm not just going to stand there and just buy it. Yep. Okay? I need a little confirmation. Okay? And, and and I do that by going down. I, I can't tell what the uh, time frame you're looking at, but if it's a daily, maybe I'll go down to like a 120 well, we or 60. We're starting this here on a weekly chart, okay? Okay. So we've yeah. got room. And the thing I like about these weekly charts is we could start to see some accumulation. And that's where these smaller time charts could start to go. Because I don't feel like I want to buy it right now. Over here, uh, we have the daily chart where we're just falling yeah. off the edge of a cliff. So maybe seeing a little yeah. bit of, of a push in that first, Brian? Yeah. I, the weekly chart, I like to see it go down a, like a hair further, yep. maybe see a little base and then pop our head and then have a little quick retrace back to that basing area. Yep. And that's where I'll buy it because now I'll have a defined risk area. Lovely. Okay. And then I'll have my target would be where that sell off probably started. I can't tell the right in that area. Yeah. Maybe get out up there and maybe even uh, look into re, uh, enter a short position again. Up maybe in that around area. 1850 or so. Yeah. I yep. mean, I am starting to see some weakness on this. And 1800 was a big mark for me, but we seem to be just probing below it right now. And to me, I'm starting on that weekly chart to really see a downward trend, you know, on yeah. that. And yeah. I think that a nice buy to the pullback to then take the downside to it could be could be pretty solid. It always unnerves me a little bit when I look at this monthly chart and I see so much room to go. And I still see longer term, uh, a big wide open space right here. So I zoom in for you around $1,500. You know, yep, yep. The, that was in, my next level. If that yeah. level didn't work for me, that was my next level down there. Okay, good. Well, that's your, that's your play on that, your bullish play on here. Uh, uh, let's just track a couple of the other things that we've been looking at. As many people on the show know, I've been bullish forever on, on crew 
oil. I'm still bullish up to about 70 bucks on that, although the gold could put a little bit of pressure on it. Uh, what I'd like to take a look at right now, uh, just see how this is going, is, you know, I've been very bearish on Zoom. I hate to revisit old areas. I hate to revisit that, go back to the same things all the time. But I've been super bearish, uh, super bearish on Zoom, as you know. Time, like literally a cup. Maybe you were on the show with me. I, I, I can't quite remember, Brian, but let's just take a look and see. But 440 was my number. Uh, you can see on here, 440. That was my last area up here where I was like looking at this area. Let's just go back. Uh, what I want to do is just make sure you, everybody at home can see this as well. This key area that we had here, 440. I mean, we've dropped like a brick 100 bucks from that. We're at the t next target for me. I think there could be a little bit of a bounce on this at the moment, but I oh, got, yeah. but I gotta say, I look again at the bigger charts, and I want to draw everybody's attention to 250. I want to zoom in over here. I want to look at this, and all I see is wide open space. Zoom to me's got 250 written all over it, and Brian, I'm looking at not a small chart here. I am looking here at a monthly chart. Love to get your thoughts on that. I'm still bearish on it, my friend. But by the way, was that a gap up into that area? I can't really it tell. It did. It gapped up into that area. And it just collapsed. And collapsed from the area <laughs> as well. I mean, it's just, yeah. Talking to that right now, I'm looking at another computer right now. Market's selling straight back off again uh, on the market right now. We've had a move. Uh, I've got to show you this, but give me your opinion on this and then we'll go over to it again. What do you think about this for, I wouldn't want to be a seller right now. I really, really wouldn't. But there's two. No. I can't see this getting the pullback that I would want. I just I can't. I would uh yeah. I, I would rather wait for that area to break on the monthly chart right there. Yeah. And then rally back up and then short that retest. I don't have a lot of faith in this 350 area. Yeah. So anyone looking at the chart, I'd like to yeah. see a little bit of a break and then get a snapback and getting something on a snapback. Exactly. Like that. Exactly my exactly I, I my just, thoughts. Not right now, but I just see the way this thing's peeling off a little bit. Not pretty nice. Let's go take a look. Actually, so bearish on Zoom still. Um, I also want to give you another one on here that I'm a little bit bearish on too. And I hate being bearish on it because I love them. But I'm a little bit bearish on Disney, i got to say as well. Let's clean up my charts right now. Looking really top heavy, this market to me, Disney. A lot of selling pressure coming in at 200 on here. I just see nothing but wide open space. I like Disney, but I like Disney lower. I like Disney back at around 150. I really do. I think it needs a bit of a pull. That's something I know, but... You know, there's a lot about it. Looking at it right now on here, again, one of those things. I want to see us break through this 185 area, 184 area. And then if I can see some continued pressure, literally pullbacks and then moving to the downside of about 150 on it. So I'm getting primed on that, but I'm feeling a little bit bearish on Disney, i got to say. Long-term play on it, though, I want to be a buyer on that. You know where I really want Disney because I'm cheap as chips? Where I really want Disney <laughs> is down here at 120. That's where I want Disney, way down there, Brian. Thoughts on Disney? That's Get you back up the uh, the truck right there. Yeah, I like that zone. Yeah, that's a great zone. And you it's know? all about that patience, really, for me. It's all about you, patience. You know what? Uh, we were talking before the show started, or earlier this morning. You know that my trading is beginning better and better every day because I've been more patient and more disciplined yeah. on my entries. Yeah. I wait for things to come to me. I slow down the process and I pick and choose what I want to be in, and it's and it's amazing. It you really is. Can have and you've got, and, and you have to be patient because there you can have no expectations. Just bringing everybody over here. I'm going to just take this down to a, a oh, wow. 30 minute chart today. Look at the Nasdaq today. Ouch. We opened, we pushed, we came back down again. We had a nice little rally and then bang. To me, not surprised. I've just been seeing a steady downturn. I just posted a video about this. Uh, in our student coaching community on a short that I was in. Looking over my shoulder, my short has closed. I had a target on the Dow while we were talking. In the time that we were talking, here's the crazy thing. Uh, I'll just show you up on here. It's in another account. There's the Dow right now. While we've been talking, show started right here. And in the last hour, we've sold off from 31,450 down to 3,900. So, I mean, we've had, what, how many points sell off there? We've sold off about 500 points while this show's been going on, Brian. And people don't and say protection isn't necessary, right? I got, yeah, I got, uh, you know, from the from what I'm looking at here on the Nasdaq, I wouldn't be surprised if we break below 12,000. 
it, it, look, it's uh, not, to, not today, of course, not but today, oh, you never but... know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> well, you, you never know, but people say there's no need for protection. I mean, tell that to first year college kids. They need it, man. You know, and this is the thing. You know, we, we need it. You know, we need to be protecting ourselves because these markets, when they move, they move. Let's go back over to that daily chart. I was saying on here, this is a tested area. I got to say, I look at this. People look at me, I'm saying I'm crazy, maybe, I know. And I'm not believing the end of the bear market. God, no, to me, this market needs a real healthy sell-off. What I see is a test down here to around 3,500. That's my line in the sand. And then 30,000, that's the real test for me. That's a buy point, 30,000. Then you've got to test this market. The best thing this can do is get a bit of a pull-up. I do not believe we're end of the, of the line. I don't. But there is some short-term weakness in the market, and the market needs a correction. End of story. Yeah, look at those two red candlesticks right there. Look how many days to the left did it wiped out of that basing We've sideways uptrend. We wiped out almost half of the gains of, yeah, this exactly. year, of the last month in a couple of weeks. Remember, markets take the I, I move up, it. stairs up, elevator down. What did you say? Take the stairs up, take the elevator down, or if it's really bad, the top window, which... Yeah, exactly. Yes. Jumped Not out the pretty, window. Not man. Oh, please. <laughs> hopefully it's just off the, you know. But the, why? Just hopefully it's off your ground level balcony, right? Yeah. You know, so just for a quick second on that point, you know, the selling is what? It's it's people who want to sell. And then all of a sudden, like, well, I got to lock in my profits. I don't want to take too big of a loss. Now it's emotion, yeah. emotionally driven. And don't get me wrong. You know? Look, when I zoom out, it all looks a bit scary. Well, the guy on the show is here saying this thing's going to go to 30,000 points, right? Well, yeah, let's zoom out and take a look. It's not that bad. I mean, right. you know, let's put it right. in perspective. We get a pullback to here around 30,000 points and the uptrend resumes. It's just you've got to understand how to take advantage of it today. And today I've been on the short side, had a really good day watching the markets. I've closed out now. In fact, we've just hit a buy point marked off on my chart here right around this 30,100, uh, 31,000 31, point. We could get a nice little bounce out of that, but it's taken all day to get there. Patience, patience, patience. In fact, I'm going to give a big shout out to Graham Spruce right now. Uh, one of our coaches in our guided trade session who called the top of the Dow Jones in our live trading session this morning. Her first target was 200 points. Some of those guys held on for it. You guys would have had a great day. We've got some great instructors at Stockability as well. Graham, big shout to you, man. You've worked with Graham as well. He's coming on a bundle, isn't he, in that live trade room, doing three mornings a week now, right? Yeah, Graham's been crushing it. You know, I know this morning I saw that trade he took. That was phenomenal. Yeah. You know, high I don't of the know day. Many... Like, it was, it was like, like the high of the day on the Dow Jones. I mean, he was getting the guys in on the Dow Jones. I just, you know, right at the highs of the day today, you know, just a beautiful area. I think he was entering around 331,400 points, and here we are 500 points lower. I mean, but it's a buy Crazy. now. I got to say that. It's a buy now. I can tell you that right now. It's filled a nice gap on this. So uh, one of those uh, is on there as well. But yeah, great. I mean, again, it's all about process. I always say process over profits, guys. Process over profits. So huh, literally transition from retirement into short term trading. It's all good. We have a lot of fun on here as well. They overlap. They over. They overlap in a big way. They you really know? do. It's just, no, it's just different time on. frames you're looking at. It's no. the same concept, just a different time frame. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brian. When are you heading back to North Carolina, how long you got now? I'm going to be staying here for a couple more days, probably Sunday evening. I'm driving back and I'll be uh, uh, home probably early Monday morning or Wonderful. something like that. Well, let us on behalf of myself and the entire Stockability team and all of our listeners and viewers, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come on the show. It's been an absolute blast on here. As well. uh, yeah. And uh, I'll connect with you a little bit afterwards and stuff. And, um, you know, again, have a good rest. Thoughts to your family and everything. Thanks for Thank you. Doing appreciate it, there it as well. Always great having you show. Let's have you back in a couple of weeks, okay? You got it, buddy. Thank Sounds you good. So Take much. care, everyone. Right. Have, have, have a... Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Brian Dumeres, student momentum coach at Stockability. I love having Brian on the show. You know, one of the things about Brian, he just tells it how it is. You know, what he lacks in finesse, he makes up for in just direct, no BS, good information. And I absolutely love that as well. Uh, we don't care about that. We don't want fluff. We just want real hard stuff on here. We want to get to the facts and have some fun and cut through all of the noise and get into the action as well. Talking of cutting through the noise, maybe you're sitting there thinking, you know, this is interesting. I'm interested more about this. I want to learn a little bit more about how those markets really work. Let's do this. Head yourself over right now if you've not yet done so. Come to one of our complimentary live webinars where our instructor team, Ryan Watkins, Dan Bustamante, myself, Brian, host our complimentary webinars showing you what we're all about and what we get up to in Stockability. Head over, my friends, to stockability.com. And the easiest way is go to our website, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you will see a list uh, of our latest complimentary webinars that you can register for at any time uh, you choose as well. Understanding how the markets really work is our next one coming up in just under a week, Wednesday, March 10th, 7 p.m. Eastern.
okay? And then we're going to be having the Trading Business Blueprint uh, on Tuesday, 16th of March, and then the Crisis Proof Business right at the end of the month at Wednesday, 31st of March. All of those slightly different subjects, all built around you taking control, your money, your move. You understand it, that nobody cares about your money more than you. Feel free, go to the website, register for any one of those as well, and we'll happily see you there uh, and love to have you on there and show you a little bit about what we do and how we can help you as well. Whew, I feel like I haven't stopped speaking today. <laughs> it's just been like, wow, an awful lot of speaking. But guys, uh, it's always a pleasure. I love doing the show with you guys. And can I sincerely say as well, I keep seeing the, the listenership going up, going up, going up. And the viewers coming on there and the questions coming in. It means the world. We put our hearts on. We love doing this. We love being with you as well. So thank you for your support as well. Take Stock Live appreciates you. Stockability.com loves you as well. Thank you so much. This show has been brought to you, like I said, by Stockability.com. It is now just after one o'clock. We will be back next week celebrating Women's Month next week with a great guest we've got coming up on the show next week. Really excited uh, to be introducing you to one of our Stockability students. We're going to be talking about the life of a busy mother, an entrepreneur, and how she fits trading into her life. Andrea will be joining us next week. Can't wait to have her on the show as well. An empowering interview we've got coming up here about what her got her into the markets, what her life is, and man, this woman, she juggles kids, real estate. She's a realtor, trading, investing. She does it all and has another business on top of that. Superwoman is all I have to say. Looking forward to introducing you to Andrea next week as well. Guys, this show, if you didn't get to see it live, as you know, you're probably looking at the recording. You can see any of our previous shows on Facebook Live, on the Stockability page, or you can go, head on over to our YouTube channel, YouTube channel there, Stockability um, channel that you can uh, go on there and please do subscribe to our youtube channel we are constantly dropping little mini lessons out there putting our thoughts out there as well helping you empower your trading and investing but forget about just trading and investing it's about you becoming the best version of yourself and having the best quality of life that you're capable of having as well that's what we stand for here at stockability.com ladies and gentlemen i've been sam evans this has been take stock live i'll see you next week have a great rest of your week and thank you so much